When it comes to dehydration, what is the proper, most efficient way of getting it done? You know, people ask me all the time, what is the right temperature to have your dehydrator at? Is it worth using a dehydrator? Is it worth making that investment into a dehydrator because of the heating element? Does it hurt potency? You know, is there a better way to do it? You know, on and on and on. And to tell you guys the truth, in my opinion, there's only one right way to do it. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in this video. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Chip Team? First of all, I wanna welcome you guys back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time ever seeing a Willie Michael video, come into this channel. Welcome to the Trip Team family, TTF, that's what it's about. And if you guys enjoyed this video, it helped you out. Just take a second, show that love, go down below, hit that subscribe button and the bell off to the side. So that way you guys know when I drop a new video. As always, if you guys want to follow me on social media, all my social media is right here, including a full library of all the videos I can't put on YouTube that will help a lot of you guys out. So if you guys don't know what I'm about, you guys will definitely find it out over there in my private library. So as I said at the beginning of the video, one of the most common questions I get asked all the time is dehydration questions. So there's a variance of the questions I'm asked whether heat affects potency, you know, is using a dehydrator the best way to do it? Should I use a cardboard box to do it? You know, how long could they be stored for? How long does it take to dehydrate? What is cracker dry? You know. I get asked these questions day in, day out. And when I first started out, I started out using a dehydrator. You know, you make the $100 to $200 investment, you realize really fast that it works, but it doesn't get the job done as good as you would think. It doesn't fit a lot of fruits in there. So if you guys are pushing out fruits and you only have a five or six tier dehydrator, it really doesn't help. You can't fit many fruits on one dehydrator wrap. So you need to figure out a better way to do it. Then you start learning about heat. Does heat degrade the mushrooms? You know, does it affect potency? And the truth of the matter is, this is highly debated throughout the community and the mycology community. You know, some say yes, some say no. In my personal opinion, Long exposure to heat, whether it's over a two or three day period, whatever the case may be, does affect potency slightly. Now, of course, that's probably not what you wanna hear, right? I mean, you put all this love, months and months of work, time, money into these mushrooms, you get your fruits, you have to dehydrate them to save them long term, and you might be hurting them by dehydrating them using heat. Now, some people are gonna say this is the best way to do things, other people are gonna disagree. My preferred method is to use no heat at all, right? I mean, whether it does or it doesn't, you know, degrade them in any way whatsoever, why even risk it if you don't have to risk it? Another good thing about the tech I'm about to show you guys is it's about half the price of purchasing a dehydrator. So you're gonna get cracker dry fruits you're gonna be able to fit a lot more fruits on this system, and it's about half the price, and it's gonna last you a lifetime. I developed this system about five years ago, and I've never went back to a dehydrator since. This works way better than a dehydrator. You're not using any heat, and it's so much cheaper. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about the supplies you're gonna need to build the Willie Michael dehydration unit. So the first thing you're gonna need is some wood. Now, when it comes to the wood, I suggest getting good wood. So if you guys go to your local department store like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever type of home improvement store you guys have around, go into the wood section, look for the baseboard. You guys can find exactly what I'm using in this video. So I bought four foot long and then it's one inch thick by two inches wide. So that's what I'm using in this video. If you guys wanna go with a thicker or a wider one, that's perfectly fine, but you're gonna to have to figure out the measurements. I did all the measurements for you guys in this video if you use the same exact wood that I'm using. So you guys wanna take that two inch by one inch baseboard and you guys are gonna need six 19 inch pieces and you guys are gonna need six 20 inch pieces. Now in this video, I'm just gonna make three tiers for you guys. But if you guys wanna make 10, 20, it's completely up to you. I've stacked up to 20 tiers with one fan and that will dehydrate 
pounds. So if you guys want to make more, go ahead and do it. Or if you guys just want to start off with two or three and then add as you guys go along and get bigger and bigger yields, then you guys could do that. That's the best part about this system is you guys could add more tiers depending on your needs. You guys are also going to need a 20 inch by 20 inch fan. You guys could purchase this from Target, Walmart, wherever you guys want to purchase them. You shouldn't spend any more than $20. The next thing you guys are going to need is screen. So this is aluminum screen that you would use to replace on a window or a door. Since we're only doing three tiers, one roll is more than enough. But if you guys plan on doing five, 10 tiers, whatever the case may be, then you guys might need more screen. But for the three that we're going to do in this video, this is more than enough screen. The last couple things you guys are going to need is a staple gun with staples, some wood glue, and some screws. We're going to be using one and one quarter inch drywall screws. But if you guys want to use a different type of screw or you guys want to use a shorter or longer screw, according to whatever the size of your wood is, that's perfectly fine. But for the wood that we're using, the one inch thick, this is more than enough screw to hold our pieces together. And of course, you guys are going to need some simple tools that I'm assuming you guys have around the house. So we're going to be using a drill to put all our screws in. But if you guys don't have a drill, you could do it manually by hand. It's just going to take a little bit more work and a little bit more time. So now that we have everything we need to put our dehydration unit together, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to start doing is we're going to start framing out our tiers. So for each tier, you're going to need two 19 inch pieces and you're going to need two 20 inch pieces. Now, when you guys are putting them together, make sure that the 20 inch pieces are overlapping the 19 inch pieces. Just like this right here, the 20 inch piece should be overlapping the 19 inch pieces. Now, once you guys have it all framed out exactly how it should look, now you guys could start to put it together. So I like to use two screws at each end, and I also use a little bit of wood glue. Now, a quick trick for you guys is to pre-drill your holes with a small drill bit. This will prevent cracking and splitting of the wood. So if you guys just want to pre-drill the holes before you put the screws in, go for it. If you guys don't mind a little bit of cracking, then you guys could just drill the screws right in. I suggest pre-drilling the holes because it will come out a lot better. You're not gonna have any cracking. It will hold up a lot better. It takes a little bit longer, you know, a few extra minutes for each tier, but it's definitely worth it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the first tier together and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it looks like. And here you go, guys. It took me about five minutes to put one of the tiers together. And as you guys can see, I have two screws at each end and I have no cracking because I pre-drilled the holes. Now the size of the holes that you guys want to pre-drill really depends on the screws that you guys are using. Just take a drill bit and try to match it up with the screw. Whatever one looks closest, that's the drill bit you want to use to pre-drill your holes. Now before I secure it with the screws, I like to dab a little bit of wood glue just to make sure it bonds really good. And as I previously said, you want the two 19 inch pieces on the inside and you want the 20 inch pieces overlapping the 19 inch pieces. This is very, very important so that everything matches up really good. So go ahead, make your other three or four tiers, however many you're gonna make, and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. So as you can see, I have all three of my tiers that I'm gonna be making in this video done. I match them all up, they match up perfectly. I don't have anything that's out of shape or overlapping. They all match up perfectly because they were cut to precision and we have the 19 inch pieces on the inside and the 20 inch pieces on the outside. So now that we have our frames for our tiers all made, now we need to add the screen. So you want to unwrap your screen and then you want to lay it over the top of one of your tiers. The easiest way to get it done the right way is to secure one of the ends and then secure the opposite end and pull it tight and start using your staple gun to go around. The more staples you use, the better. It doesn't need to look perfect. I like using a lot of staples because I put a lot of weight on these screens sometimes depending on how dense some of the fruits are and I don't want no tearing. I don't want the screen to pull away from the wood or anything like that. So I like to use an excess amount of staples. But if you guys want to save some of your staples and not use as many, that's perfectly fine. Just take your time. Make sure you're pulling the screen tight every time you staple. So that way you guys don't have any sagging on your trays. Now, don't worry about overlapping screen, you know, excess screen. 
after we have everything stapled nice and tight, we'll go around with a pair of scissors or a box cutter and we'll clean this up. So go ahead, lay a screen on all of your tears that you made, all of your frames, and then we'll come back and we'll see what we got. So as you can see, the tears are done. We cleaned up all the excess screen and it looks really good. So now let me show you guys how to stack all your tears. So hypothetically, what you would do is you would fill up the screen, not overlapping any of your fruits. You guys would lay out the fruits so that it's taking up every inch of space on the screen. And then you guys would put a new tear and you continue to stack your tears one after another after another, and they would all be lined with fruits. Now, some people might be saying, well, you know, two inches isn't tall enough because sometimes we get fruits that are four to five inches across, and that's true. But usually them fruits, we cut the caps off so we could print them anyways. So we usually lay them caps in their own trays and we lay them flat down and then we put the stems in another tray. So this is more than enough depth for all your fruits. Now, when you guys are stacking your individual trays or your individual layers, the first thing you want to do is you want to stack them on top of some aluminum foil or some type of brown craft paper at the bottom tray because we're going to have the air pushing down. So as you guys know, spores are going to still continue to drop. So if you guys don't put no paper down or aluminum foil, you guys will have a big black square from all the spores once they're done dehydrating. So just lay a trash bag under there, some you know paper towels, some craft paper, some aluminum foil, just so something's down there to catch all the spores that fall off of the fruits as they're dehydrating. Now, once you guys have all your layers stacked up, this is when you take your fan and you lay it on top of the last rack. So obviously where the air blows should be facing down towards your fruits and you guys want to turn it on once you have all your fruits in there and it will just continue to push air through all of those racks, dehydrating your fruits with no heat. Now, how long does it take? Between 24 and 48 hours, depending on how dense or how many fruits you guys are actually dehydrating. Now, this works really, really well. Typically, it only takes about 24 hours for most types of fungi. Now, if you guys are doing something thicker like PE or some koi or something like that, then it might take a little bit longer, 24 to 48 hours, but you're using no heat whatsoever. It's just using airflow to dehydrate the fruits. This is something I created a few years back and it works absolutely amazing. I got about 50 racks and depending on how much fruits I need to dehydrate, that really determines how many racks I need to use. Now, anything over 20 racks, I suggest getting a new fan and stacking them in stacks of 20. Now, this is absolutely amazing, especially now people are starting to get into the commercial stuff with recreational being legalized in different places. So commercially, you could dehydrate pounds and pounds and pounds at a time for way cheaper than dehydrator prices. This setup, this three tier setup that I just made with the fan, with all the supplies costs less than 40 bucks. So if you guys want to add a new tier, each tier is going to probably run you about four to five dollars to make. So it's really, really cheap, really effective, and you're using no heat at all. So you don't need to worry about any decrease in potency or reliability or anything like that. Now, even if you don't believe that's the case, you don't believe heat has anything to do with it. I could tell you for a fact, prolonged heat definitely has an effect. Without a doubt, regardless of what anybody says, it does. Prolonged heat has an effect, and that's the reason why I use this system. If that wasn't the case, I would just use dehydrators and call it a wrap. I developed this because I wanted to dehydrate without a heating element. As you guys know, dehydration units, they use heating elements. So you could usually set it to different temperatures, but regardless, if you could get away doing it in the same amount of time with the same efficiency without heat, why wouldn't you? And especially for half the price. Even the cheapest dehydration unit, going and buying it brand new on Amazon or wherever, is gonna cost you about $100. And they could go way up into the hundreds or even the thousands if you wanted to get a commercial sized one. So I can tell you guys, I know a lot of commercial growers are gonna actually start using this. I could guarantee for a fact because it's so efficient, it's so cheap, and it gets it done without the risk of 
affecting the fruits in the end. Now, when you guys do actually use it, just leave your fruits in there until they're cracker dry. If they need a little bit longer, just let them go a little bit longer. Usually 24 to 48 hours is more than enough to get them cracker dry, but if you need to leave them in there, depending on your environment, where you live, it might take a little bit longer. Something else you could do is add a dehumidifier to the room that you have these dehydrating in because that will remove a lot of the moisture from the air and help speed up the process. And there you go guys, that's how you make the Willy Michael dehydration unit extremely cheap, extremely effective. And I thank you guys for checking out this new video. Now I wanna give a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters, everybody that supports me over there. I absolutely love you guys. I couldn't do this without you. And I also wanna shout out the Mycology Hiking Club. Now, somebody sent me these hoodies. They sent me like four different ones in different colors, but they didn't put a name, a website, or anything like that. But I absolutely love the sweaters. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. I love them. And if you guys wanna send me some to give out to the Trick Team family, feel free. You guys already got the P.O. box number. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.